Do you know how much fuel pilots are required to carry? This is explained in the fuel policy. Although we are not going to consider a specific number or come to a specific value in this particular video, but this will give you an idea about what policy determines how much amount of fuel is required to be carried for a particular flight and for that particular airplane. Because it varies depending on the fuel consumption. Let's say in Cessna 172, the fuel consumption is much lesser compared to Airbus 320 or it is airbus 350 okay so every airplane has different fuel consumption but how much amount of fuel is required to be carried for your flight is dependent on certain policy which is known as fuel policy it's quite important to understand this as it has good amount of weightage and it is required to calculate payload as well so let's dive into this topic This fuel required to be carried for a given flight is broken down into four categories. One is taxi fuel, other is trip fuel, then reserve fuel and extra fuel. So first one, taxi fuel. Taxi fuel, as the name suggests, is the one which is required to taxi from the bay of where airplane is parked to the takeoff point. The taxi fuel not only includes the fuel required for taxi, but it also includes the fuel that is required by the APU. APU provides air conditioning on ground and provides electrical supply when the airplane is on ground and engines are not started yet. As well as taxi fuel will include fuel required for startup as well as if there is any additional holding because of the congestion at the holding point due to heavy traffic for departure then that will also be taxi fuel this fuel could be approximately about 200 kgs in airbus 320 of course depending on the airport depending on the traffic at that particular airport this amount will vary it can even be 500 kg depending on the circumstances so for your particular airplane it needs to be calculated separately then fuel required for the trip which is trip fuel trip is place of departure to place of destination the fuel that is required for this trip is known as trip fuel so this includes the fuel which is required for takeoff then fuel which is required to join an airway let's say you depart from mumbai for delhi okay now uh, if you depart from runway 27 in mumbai and you have to fly an airway Quebec 1 to Delhi then from the departure runway to the point you join that airway you will need to fly standard instrument departure or SID so the route which will join the runway all the way to the airway is known as standard instrument departure and the fuel which is required to fly on this SID is also included in trip fuel as well as the fuel which is required to climb to a certain altitude which is cruising altitude that is of course included in trip fuel in between if air traffic controller asks you to climb or descend because of the traffic requirement yes the fuel will be required okay then from top of climb to top of descent that is in the cruise phase of the flight whatever the fuel is required that will also be included in trip fuel from top of descent till the time you join the approach for landing at delhi let's say you get clearance to land on runway 29 left so you will be getting the star which will join the airway quebec one all the way to the approach of the runway 29 left so when you fly on that star the fuel will be required by an airplane so that will also be included in trip fuel then you execute the approach and land so this entire flight will require fuel by the airplane and that will be included in trip fuel of course this trip fuel is dependent on what is the weight of the airplane what is the temperature etc that will change the amount of trip fuel let's say if the airplane is heavy fully loaded the amount of trip fuel will be higher if airplane is lighter amount of trip fuel is lesser depends on the passenger load the airplane could be heavier or lighter okay then reserve fuel reserve fuel is the one which is of course reserve in car you have reserve okay but when you are on road that time 
you have petrol pump okay where you can stop here you have to plan a flight beforehand and know how much amount of reserve fuel would be required for this particular flight and carry that amount of fuel this reserve fuel is categorized into four types one is contingency fuel or route reserve fuel second is alternate fuel third one is final reserve fuel and fourth one is additional fuel let's see the first one contingency or route reserve fuel contingency fuel is required in case let's say if on that particular day your airplane consumes more fuel because of certain reason than what you had planned for then of course at that point of time you cannot just land in the middle of the flight just because you're running out of fuel and that is uh, not a great planning as a pilot so you should have little more amount of fuel that will be included in contingency fuel if in case on that particular day if you instead of planned wind let's say you plan for tailwind of 10 knots but in flight you have headwind of 10 knots that means there is change in wind or which will increase the flight time and that will increase the amount of fuel required for your flight in this case you will need more fuel so that will be included in contingency or route reserve fuel if in case on that particular day because there is more traffic on that particular route like mumbai delhi route is very busy so if in case you don't get a certain flight level which you had filed for in the flight plan and you get a lower flight level when you fly at a lower flight level then the amount of fuel consumption is more because at lower level the density of air is more and engine will have to provide more fuel to combine with more denser air in order to get that amount of thrust so there is fuel air mixture in the engine so if more denser air is present then more fuel is required if less denser air is present then less fuel is required okay so it is economic to fly at higher altitude but if on that day you don't get that flight level and it is occupied by some other airplane then you will have to fly at lower level which will consume more fuel so that time you cannot tell atc no i don't have fuel to fly at this level so that is the reason why you need to carry contingency fuel or route reserve fuel that's about contingency or route reserve next alternate fuel if you go at the destination and because there is bad weather let's say there is thunderstorm activity present at delhi that day or if one of the runway is shut and there is a lot of traffic on that particular day and your sequence is way behind for landing and you do not have that much of extra fuel to wait and keep holding then you don't keep waiting until you run out of fuel completely and you plan before and okay fine if in case i don't get to land at so and so time then i am diverting to the alternate airport okay so in that case let's say your planned alternate is jaipur then you can plan your diversion to jaipur go land there refuel there and then come back to delhi this is the way you need to carry alternate fuel from delhi to jaipur okay and that is at a planned flight level as per the forecast winds okay this needs to be followed so that is regarding the alternate fuel let's say you go to jaipur because of certain uh, one of the runway is shut and there is a lot of traffic because of that your sequence is way behind you have uh, there is bad weather and all those things and you have diverted now when you come to jaipur you won't be the only airplane to divert there might be some other four five airplanes which might have diverted along with you you might have to wait for a while before landing at jaipur but make sure that you do not land with very minimum amount of fuel okay that is another dangerous situation so if it case you might have to hold for a while you will require certain amount of fuel which is known as final reserve fuel that final reserve fuel for a jet engine is 30 minutes of fuel at holding level of 1500 feet above alternate airport okay so that is uh, the final reserve fuel if in case it's a piston engine airplane then this amount is 45 minutes at uh, the alternate airport so that is final reserve fuel what is this additional fuel 
additional fuel is required in case if there is no <coughs> destination alternate available or no en route alternate available if there is no destination alternate available like let's say you are going to a place which is an island there is no other airport around where you can divert so in that case you have to carry additional or more reserve fuel for holding and that is about two hours that is the additional fuel which you will need to carry all right and uh, other scenario where there is no in route alternate available in that case let's say you go from one place to other and in the middle there is absolutely no alternate let's say you fly over ocean or you fly over poles you fly over jungle or you fly over desert or uh, over polar regions in that case if there is no other airport available from departure to destination in that case let's say you have a pressurization failure you have to descend to a lower flight level which is 10000 feet okay and uh, of course the amount of fuel consumption will be more in that case because of that you will need to carry more fuel and that is why you need to carry additional fuel okay so these are the four categories of reserve fuel now we have covered taxi fuel trip fuel reserve fuel the fourth one is extra fuel so first of all trip fuel itself is calculated considering what is the forecast weather at destination what is the forecast weather at alternate what is the weather at departure what is the expected traffic at departure destination alternate accordingly the trip fuel is calculated if there is any bad weather or if there is expected traffic congestion then extra fuel is required to be calculated and is carried by the pilot all right so these are the categories and breakdown of fuel i hope you have followed this if you have any queries or doubts feel free to comment down below thank you